Hello, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. This is going to be part six of Sally's The Great Earthquake of Revelation. The other study kind of ended abruptly. So, let's go to Revelation chapter 6. Get out your King James Bible. Now, let's see. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. Uh, the seals are being opened here. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar. What altar? The altar of God in heaven, people. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Now, this Bible verse right here puts the nail in the coffin for what is called soul sleep. Uh, people tell you, well, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that says the dead know nothing. Well, these people know that they were killed. So when it says that they know nothing, I'm kind of of the opinion that they don't know what's going on on the earth. They know nothing about what's going on in the earth. But their souls are... You know, here it is. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, for the testimony which they held, and they cried. Who cried? The souls that were slain for the word of God and for their testimony. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. And white robes were given unto them, given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also, and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. All right, so, uh, verse 12, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. There we go. Sally writes, the church will not be raptured until the last day. All right, turn your Bible to John chapter 6. All right, John chapter 6, verse 37. Words of Christ in red. This is Jesus speaking, people. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Verse 38, John 6, 38. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Oh. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. All right, let's... Uh, Verse 44, no man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Does that sound like election to you? You know, I mean, really. You know, I'm not a Calvinist because uh, Calvin didn't die for me, but uh, if John Calvin read verses like this and why he believes in election, I can definitely understand why he felt that way. Verse 54. Uh, well, verse 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. And this is why, uh, I guess, Van, uh, Hollywood comes up with the vampires. 
I want to drink your blood, blah, right? All the vampire garbage that's on Hollywood. Jesus said, whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Oh, so Christians are cannibals and vampires, huh? I've actually had people say that. So, verse 58. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. And of course, we're talking about the Last Supper where Christ took the bread and he blessed it. And he says, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the wine and he says, drink, this is my blood. Um, about, oh, I don't know, 16, 17 years ago, I had a, um, my youngest daughter was getting into the golf scene. I, you know, I'm thinking golf. I'm thinking Gothic cathedrals in the church, right? So I started looking into it. And, uh, you know, you're talking stuff like Marilyn Manson and all kinds of stuff like that. I was like, really uh, not too happy, if, I guess you could say. But uh, I made a website for uh, goths and vampire wannabes. And uh, it got really popular on Google for a while. I got over a quarter of a million views. And then uh, one day Google destroyed it, delisted it. You couldn't find the site anymore. So I eventually I let it go. But um, because there's no sense paying for a website if nobody's going there. I was working a full-time job, actually two uh, jobs, uh, one full-time, one part-time. And uh, I was getting, there were days I was getting hundreds of emails every day from people. And I would tell them, you know, if you want eternal life, you need the blood. Well, guess what? I told them this. This is what I told them. But they're so messed up from Hollywood they're thinking they need to bite somebody's neck and suck the blood out of their neck. You know, it's just, uh, what can I tell you? You tell people the gospel, that's all you can do. And uh, But I did. I was getting hundreds of emails every day. I, I couldn't, there was no way to answer them all. I mean, let's face it. You get two, three hundred emails a day and, and you spend three minutes on each one. Um, six, that's 600 minutes. That's 10 hours, 10 hours of constantly, you know, answering emails. I couldn't do it. You know, shame. I, I tried, but, you know, what can you do? But I knew over 15 years ago that Google was delisting Bible sites because I was reaching a lot of people. I was shocked, really. So, but this is, this is what I used. Uh, you know, really good. All right, let's go to John 11. Sally writes, let's go to John 11. And uh, we'll see uh, what happens. All right, in John 11, uh, let's see, we are talking about uh, Lazarus. Okay. Lazarus is had died, and Martha's, you know, talking to Jesus, right? Uh, let's see, verse 21. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Wow, how's that for faith? Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Oh, oh no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong there. No, I know he's going to rise again at the pre-trib rapture, right? No. 
He's going to rise again at the last day, just like the King James Bible says. Verse 25, Jesus saith, said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Amen to that, people. That's, that's the gospel. All right, John chapter 12. I guess we'll start in verse 42. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, now remember the Pharisees are a denomination or a sect of Jews. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Has anything changed in almost 2,000 years? No. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. Bob's note here, conversely, if you don't believe on Jesus, you don't believe on who sent Jesus. If When you reject Jesus, you're rejecting God the Father that sent Jesus, his only begotten Son. Think about that. He that believeth on me believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Oh, I thought that was the pre-trib rapture. Uh, no. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. All right, John chapter 5. I guess we're going to start in verse 25. Jesus speaking, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this. For the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. Wow. All right, Sally writes, um, and on and this on top of everything else is also when the harvest takes place. All right, go to Matthew chapter 13. Um, oh, we're doing the parable of the wheat and the tares. All right, so, as a matter of fact, I did a Bible study on this. If anybody's interested, let's go Matthew 13, verse 24. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. 
But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, or weeds, and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Oh yeah. Genesis 6, people. Tares, weeds. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares. They're the ones that get the pre-trib rapture. I mean, well, they're the ones that get the rapture first, not pre-trib, but gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn the tares get bundled first and burned so where's the pre-trib rapture oh see jesus he he wasn't thinking when he said this right i mean that's kind of the thinking of the pre-tribbers, I don't know. All right, now, in verse 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. Oh, wait, we need to go back. Let's read verse 34. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. Now, you know what? People will tell you that Jesus spoke in parables so that the common people could understand the stories. That's wrong. Jesus spoke in parables to hide, to hide what he was teaching from the multitudes. Unless you've got God's spirit and ears to hear and eyes to see, it don't make no sense. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went in the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. In other words, uh, explain this to us. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Huh. Think Canaanites. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fires, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now, in Matthew 13, uh, verse, chapter 13, verse 10, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He, Jesus, he answered and said unto them, Because... It is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. See, Jesus didn't speak in parables to, so people could understand. He spoke in parables to hide, to hide things from those that it was not given. All right, so Sally writes, Um... 
And she says, uh, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. Okay. Uh, the Son of Man will send out his angels and they'll weed out of his kingdom everything but that causes sin and all who do evil. They'll throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. So, I like it. God has a garden and there's going to be some flame weeding going on. Woohoo! I hope he gives me a flaming sword. I'll know what to do with it. Turn me loose. All right, Sally says we should read uh, Matthew 13, verse 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the, of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus saith unto them, Have ye understood all these things? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. All right, Sally writes, So it will be at the end of the age. A great earthquake, great hail, final judgment, darkness, noise, and a devouring fire, Armageddon, the harvest, and the rapture of the church. The martyrs are avenged, and the dead rise from their graves, and so it will be at the end of the age, with all of these things taking place. My original intention was to write this paper solely on the great earthquake, but that proved impossible with so many things happening together in the end, all of which are ultimately intertwined or connected with the sequence or timing of one verifying that of another. But the Lord tells us that after this, all right, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 65. All right, this is going to be the end of part six. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.